Versatile Hiva is a very important guard to know, uh, and I use it a lot. And the reason why it's important is because it's, you can end in that position from so many guards. Say, for example, you're playing De La Hiva. It's quite common that people are trapping the leg and stepping into a Versatile Hiva. If you're not comfortable with, with this guard, you're going to have a hard time here. What I feel, the moment you start having a good Versatile Hiva, you can kind of mess it up in different positions. And even though they're able to go into a good knee slide position, you're going to be comfortable. This can also happen if you're playing collar and sleeve. People are trapping the leg and start going into the, this position. And then I'm just adapting to it and I'm playing here. One of the most important ideas and concepts that really helped me uh, in my reverse de la Hiva is understanding the different levels. So I normally categorize this as level 1, level 2 and level 3. So what I mean by that, Level one is when the partner has one knee on the ground. Level two is when they are leaning towards like this with having their heel up. And level three is when they're standing tall. You always have to read which level the opponent is on. Otherwise, you're going to have a really hard time. So the way you control the position and the way you attack the position is really dependent on which level they're passing at. So you have to look at that. Because if you try to just do the same move, on all the different levels, you're gonna have a hard time because each level has their certain things to it. So you read to really read that and know the differences. So now I'm just gonna go show slightly some of these from the different levels and how my thought process are in each of them. First, we're gonna start with level one. It's when they have the knee on the ground. Whenever someone is at this level, it's quite easy to have color grip and control their body like this. And it's easy to have good connection. The, the good thing about this level, it's quite easy to transfer weight because it's not driving too much, so it's quite easy to just mess with the weight. And this opens up for different possibilities. It becomes quite easy to spin through and start going for the back, or it gives you the option to start sitting up for a single leg, or you can use that just to get sit up and go into deep half guard. So whenever someone is uh, passing from level one, my concern is having good distance control because otherwise the distance between us is too short so he can start, for example, smashing me, putting pressure. So I'm really concerned about distance control at this level and I'm also concerned about transferring weight. So I'm just trying to get the weight over here and from there it opens up for a lot of attacks. So one of my favorite attacks from this level is the kiss of the dragon hair. So what I'm doing, I'm kicking and spinning through here, lifting and taking the back. Another very common uh, level to meet is the level two. A lot of people, when you're doing reverse del Hiva, they, they try to slide through, putting a lot of pressure. So if, I, if I'm tackling level two as I did with level one, you're gonna have a hard time. And the reason why, transferring weight in this position is gonna be hard, because he, he's driving so much. So I'm not gonna try to transfer weight, but my idea here is to use his momentum against himself. Because in this position, he, he drives a lot towards me. But that opens up to start lifting him. Either to spin through and take the back. Or you can either do like I did, lift him over and spin for the back. Or you can use this position to lift him over your head and go into different X guards. You can eventually find the waiter, X guard on the other side. So my general idea at level two is to use the momentum against himself to lift them. And then another thing people like to do is to break off the grip and stand tall up, okay? Now it's, I don't feel I have the possibility to transfer his weight. I don't feel I have the possibility to lift him over my head. So instead of moving around on him, I'm going to start working. So what I like to do here is to use the underhook. And from there, you can spin through, throw your leg in and take the back. Each of these techniques we could go way more in depth on, but sometimes what you need is you need a broader overview. There's, you know, there's depth of game and width of game. So sometimes if you get so focused on how to do one single technique, the person can block it if they change one position. So that's where those broader looks at positions are really important to speed up kind of how you understand the position overall. And then as you get that kind of broad understanding, then when we start going more in depth and technical in the positions, it has more context.